Hello everyone and welcome to this first installment of the TDE Academy where we will be talking about remote cloning and upgrading encrypted PDBs. After a short PowerPoint presentation I will also show you a live demo on how to upgrade an 1810 PDB to a 1907 PDB. Hi, my name is Peter Wahl. I'm a principal product manager here in Oracle Server Technologies in the, in the database security group responsible for, um, for encryption and key management. This is our safe harbor statement to make sure that you don't make any purchasing decision based on what you will be learning today. So what will be what will we be doing during this workshop? First I will define the goal and talk about TDE updates and also go into extra patches that I needed to make this all work. Uh, parts 2, 3, 4 and 5 are already the live demo. Uh, in part 2 we will review the TDE setup of the source database and prepare that for cloning. In part 3 we will review the TDE setup of the destination database and prepare that for cloning. Then in part 4 we clone the PDB from an 1810 container to a 1907 container and finally upgrade the 1810 PDB to a 1907 PDB, always keeping the encryption keys in close view. So the goal of this workshop is to enable DBAs to successfully complete upcoming upgrade projects with encrypted databases. The Oracle database um, 18C will run out of support in June 2021, while the Oracle database 19C is the current long-term release and will be with us until March 2026. The correct steps and the correct sequence can make a big difference between success and failure because the number of let me try this again attempts in TDE are very limited. Both the source and destination database are two node rack databases with a shared outer open wallet and ASM. And the TDE setup is based on the static and dynamic initialization parameters and no longer needs changes in sconnet.ora. Okay, so now that we talked about the new and the old TDE setup, on the left side we see the traditional controls for TDE, on the right side we see the new ones that you can use starting from Oracle Database 18. Um, on the left side we see a typical scenario for, for a wallet-based um, TDE setup. We have method equals file and then a directory. That directory holds the password-protected wallet and maybe an auto-open wallet if you have an auto-open connection. And that would translate to wallet root that points to a directory and the TDE configuration points to file. Now the second example is a password protected OKB setup and for this you would use wallet root like before and the TDE configuration would point to OKV. Now the next, uh, the third example shows OKV with a directory which means we have an auto open connection into OKV. For this again we have wallet root and TDE configuration points to OKV pipe file. You would also use that TDE configuration if you migrate from a wallet to OKV. Then afterwards, if you would like to keep an auto open wallet in place, an auto open connection into OKV in place, then you would leave it that way. In older database releases, the database found the OKV client installation by automatically creating a link from oracle base slash okv slash dollar oracle sid okv client dot aura into the installation directory that is how the database finds the okv client installation now if you do this with a new setup then you put the okv client software into wallet root slash okv and the database will find it there all by itself in 12.2 we introduced another um, auto open wallet which allows us to hide the key store password could be the the wallet password or the okv password in another auto open wallet and then replace the string in the secret plus command line instead of typing in the password you type in external store um, that location was outside of the secret or aura changes so we needed an extra parameter external key store credential location which helps the database to find that wallet now in the new setup, you put this into wallet root slash TDE underscore SEPS and your database will find it automatically. What about patches? On the source and on the destination database, I installed patch 30, 39, 80, 99, 
which allows me to change the database default encryption algorithm from AES-128 to AES-192 or AES-256. That's important for the parameter encrypt new table spaces because the encryption key that will be applied to those table spaces is the database default key. And so if this is now an AES-256 key, all new table spaces will be encrypted with AES-256. On the destination side, I also installed patch 2946-9563, which is mandatory to enable PDB cloning via database links. Now there is a parameter called one-step plugging for PDB with TDE. If that is changed to true, it allows you only to clone PDBs via database links without providing or needing to know the password of the destination wallet. Now this functionality has been superseded by replacing the wallet password with a string external store, which is applicable to many more TDE commands. Okay, so here's the overview of the cloning upgrade pro process. We will create a user on the source database with proper privileges to allow cloning. Then on the destination database, we create a database link that points to the source database and then we clone the PDB. Um, in if the source database is 12, 2 or 18, then the PDB keys are copied automatically into the destination wallet. Then we upgrade the PDB and then we rekey the upgraded PDB so that it uses its own key. Okay, so here we go into the 18C database. We look at the patches that are installed and we see that we use the new parameters to set up TDE. So we have wallet root points to a directory. And if we look into this directory, we only see another subdirectory TDE. So that, that directory contains the password protected and the auto open wallet of that 18C database. So we see we already we have a PDB with two encrypted table spaces protected and users. And we have a table that is in the protected table space and we can select from it because we have an auto open connection into our wallet. And here we see the two encryption keys that belong to that PDB. And in order to do a live clone so that we don't have to put the source database into read-only mode, we need archive log and local undo table spaces to be active. And here I create a user that uh, is used by the database link from the destination database. So here we are in our destination database. Again, we check the patching status and the applied patches. And again, we look at the TDE configuration. We have wallet root, like in the other database. The default algorithm is set to AES-256. And so now if we look into this directory, we see two subdirectories, one for TDE, which contains the password protected and auto open wallet for TDE itself. And then in the TDE underscore SCPS directory, we have an auto open wallet that allows us to replace the key store password in the administer key management commands with external store. So we have an existing PDB and now we create a database link and we look in our wallet and we see that our 19C PDB also has two encryption keys. And so now we create the new pluggable database via database link identified by external store that replaces our wallet password of the destination wallet. So here are the keys that we just loaded from the source database into our destination database. We open the PDB upgrade and we upgrade. That's only one command. And after 50 minutes, this is done. And now we can open the database normally. We set a key so that this database uses, it, uses its own key. Again, we don't have to give a wallet password. It has been replaced by external store. And now we recompile the database. 
Uh, it takes roughly 10 minutes and then after this is done we confirm that the PDB has been updated so this is now in 19.7 and we can encrypt the system, sysaux, table spaces. Now the default encryption algorithm in the target database is set to AES 256 but in the 18C database the default key was set to AES 128 so we have to use AES128 and then rekey that table space to AES256. And that only applies to the system table space. Okay. Let's confirm. Now there are still two table spaces encrypted with AES128. We can fix this by rekeying the protected and the user table space with uh, 2 AES 256. It's a simple wiki operation. Okay, so now the existing and the incoming 18C PDB has been upgraded and they are fully encrypted. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little live demo and uh, I would be glad if you join my network on linkedin.com or follow me on blogs.oracle.com where I occasionally blog about TDE or Oracle Key Vault. Thank you very much for your time. Bye bye.